What's up, everyone? Man, I'm happy to be, be here. Oh shit, the latency on this mic is tripping me out. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Let me turn this off for a second. Okay, sick. Yo, yo. So, man, I'm happy to be on the stream. What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Ah, oh, thanks, y'all. Yeah, my boy Julius did it in L.A. Julius Caesar, you guys should check him out if you guys are ever in L.A. Want to get some crazy hair art? He's really, really tight. So. Oh, that's what's up. I'm just reading a comment. It's a little hard to see the names, guys. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, I meet so many people when I go out places and... They never hit me up. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think people just, they get shy or something. I don't know. So it's cool. Thanks for saying what's up, man. You guys have to understand, I meet so many people, like 1% ever actually follow up and say what's up to me. Um, I'm at a new spot right now, guys. I'm in the process of moving. And it's been such a crazy few weeks, guys. I've had no sleep. And I'm doing renovations, and it's just like a lot going on. Um, but I really wanted to keep going with these live streams. I, I have a lot of fun doing it with you guys. Thanks so much. Brett's 37 says, congrats on the move. Thank you. Another comment in the chat says, hope you can come to Amsterdam sometime to DJ. Yeah, that would, that would be amazing. I can't wait to go to Amsterdam. I went, I went to Amsterdam with Abel for one of the first European tours and uh, hands down one of my favorite cities I've been to. Got another comment in the chat saying, have I been to India? I haven't, but I, I literally can't wait to go. Um, we got a couple of people in the chat saying, are you Italian? Angel Fire with the Italian Stallion. Yeah, I want to I wanna really tour, guys. I really look forward to it. I can't wait. Can't wait to move around and travel the world again. Um, yo, thanks so much for the nice comment. So many nice comments, man. I wish I could see the names a little bit better. I got to fix that maybe for the next stream. Uh, we got a great comment in the chat here. It says, uh, asking why I'm not releasing music with any major labels. Um, I'm not doing that because I've kind of already went down that road and went down that path. And um, it just doesn't seem to really work that well with how I want to work. Like, I want to just create things and just... I'm like, uh, I got so much ideas all the time. Working with labels requires you to be really strategic and really well-planned. Um, I like working more, like, smaller teams. I like working more, like, directly with people. I like being a lot more in control. And um, I'm very picky. When you work with a big label, you're dealing with a ton of people, so it's it can be challenging, I find. Um so many great comments in the chat, but I think let's let's pull up some sounds. I um I downloaded some new synths yesterday night. And um I think you guys would really like it. Yo, can you guys hear and see everything okay in the so far on the stream? Okay, awesome. Just want to make sure. I just got this new blue mic and um it was a way better option than the other mic situation I have. So yeah, this is kind of like my little mobile rig, guys. So I, I'm I'm going to try to we're going to do a few different streams here in the coming weeks. So I'm going to try to really make this uh, stream set up as sick as the last one was. And then, of course, I'll be moving again shortly after that. So 
the next few streams are going to be more remote mobile streams, a little bit more not as like, you know, I'm not going to have all my gear with me is kind of my point. Um, so this is from a company called U-HE. And uh, man, I just grabbed all their stuff because I've been using Diva forever. And I just always wanted to try out their other synths. So I thought I'd pull it up. So this is Ace. Let's just run through some sounds. Let me switch the camera here. That's cool. Yo, we got a comment in the chat that I have to respond to. And they ask uh, if I'm ever going to plan on posting on my YouTube page again. And um, yeah, I'm posting all the time. I'm Everything I'm creating from here on out is going to be with Joy Odyssey. That's my new alias. Um, Elangelo still, obviously, that name and that whole thing exists. Uh, but that's going to be dedicated for producing. Whereas Joy Odyssey is really where my focus is. And I just want to be creating and sharing with you guys kind of endlessly through this um, alias. So yeah, definitely check out YouTube. Uh, the channel is um, just Joy Odyssey. And I'm posting everything on there and whatnot. Uh, okay, guys, so I'm, I'm scrolling through sounds here. I found this really, really cool, simple one. And... Um, Last fire. We got another comment in the chat asking about how you get signed to a major label. And, um... Yeah, you just got to put in that work and you got to make them notice you. You got to create great product. You got to have a fan base. So I don't really think it's so much about working with a major label anymore. It's, it's primarily just about building an audience and creating great stuff. So just do that. Man, this synth is just super crazy. I can't believe I've never used this before. Let's go try out this, this one called Bazil.
let's turn up let's turn up the tempo here to about 140. I've been really liking the fast tempos lately. That's crazy. Crazy. I'm lo I'm loving going through these sounds right now. These are all so cool. These, these are crazy. Let's try Hive. Cool. That's so cool. Let's keep searching for sounds though. That's really nice, but let's keep going. We got a great comment in the chat and uh, they, uh, they're asking if there's any tips to know when a beat is done. Um, just keep creating more music and don't get so stuck on the one that you're working on. Just, just start a new idea. I think it's always really healthy to, in a day, um, like, okay, so guys, I basically do this all day, every day for years. And, and what I found is like, if you create something new every day, and then you work on finishing something every day, that helps create like a really good balance. If you're only focusing on trying to finish something, then you can really quickly get lost in, in that world. But if you're mixing it in with like making new songs and writing new things, then you keep yourself balanced more. And um, I think that's really helpful. So, so for whoever was asking me in the chat about, about that question, it's like just take some space from that song and just start writing a new idea and come back to it. Because when you come back to it with fresh ears, you have to approach it really fresh, you know, almost like take out a piece of paper with fresh ears and just start writing all the things you hear that you want to do to get it done. And that way, 
you are listening to it with fresh ears, a fresh perspective, and you have a very clear idea of what needs to happen. Um, so that can be really helpful. Okay. Let's keep going through some different sounds here. Wow, that's really cool. Let's capture that. Okay, let's put on the click track. Okay, that's amazing. Let's um let's duplicate it. Let's delete the MIDI data. Let's arm the new track we just duplicated. And let's now before we hit play on that, let's go through some more sounds. Oh, that's fire. Hey, we got a good comment in the chat and uh, somebody said, um, find and develop your sound with a local artist and blow them up. If you build it, they will come. Couldn't agree more, you know? Um, guys, all you have to do is build it build it and they will come, you know? It's like that amazing scene from Wayne's World. It's really true. Just build it, whatever you're hearing, whatever you're feeling, don't wait for someone else to do it. Do it yourself, create it. If you hear something a certain way, do it. You know, don't, ask, don't wait for permission. Don't wait for anything, just do it. Um. I did that growing up when I was when I was 14, 15, 13, however young I was, I was just downloading stuff and working and doing stuff. I was connecting with different artists in my city and um, I put in that time, guys. I put in that time. I was traveling across the country, working with different rappers across Canada. I was just trying things. So I highly recommend like whatever you guys are doing just just build with your local community and create and don't get caught up in this whole social media smoke and mirrors stuff. Just create some great stuff with some friends and some artists in your, in your community. When you start to do that and you start conquering those mountains, the other bigger mountains get easier and easier and easier. So, you know, I would say create your sound. Create, and, and, and how you do that is just by putting in that work, guys. You'll naturally develop biases in what you prefer and what you don't prefer. And it'll be all be based off of whatever songs that you were listening to and programming your taste with, right? So, for example, I spent my life programming my taste with, like, Stevie Wonder and Michael, like, obsessively, you know? 
And then when I was getting more into producing, I was obsessing over all the different great producers of our, of our day, you know? And then you create biases and, you know, even myself, I've had times in my life where what I was creating was really close to my idols. And you got to just kind of take a step back and there's a time for you not to listen to anything as well too. So something that might surprise you guys is that I actually don't listen to music much at all ever. Um, so it's a, I have to have a balance. And sometimes I can swing too much into not listening to what's going on. So it's good to find the balance that works for you. Uh, if you find yourself copying your idols too much or your mentors too much, whatever word you want to use, then just take a step back. Just stop listening to them and just kind of get lost in creating. We have another great comment in the chat asking, um, do I tend to mix at lower volumes and how do you not get carried away with wanting it to be? I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to find this comment. And how do you not get carried away with wanting it to be loud and exciting while producing? Yeah, so I mix not quiet. And I do that because a lot of the stuff that I do, I'm quite familiar with levels. I'm quite familiar with what frequencies I want and so forth. So I feel very confident in my skill set and my intuition to just do what feels right. And for me, like... I love listening to stuff somewhat loud. Um, so that's just me, but it doesn't have to always be that way. And, you know, I think it's like you can do things technically correct. You could do that for a lot of different things. And then there's what you can do, just what feels right. And again, just do what feels right. If that, you know, obviously don't be damaging your ears, be easy. But if something feels right, if it sounds right to have it loud and get you in that zone, well, get in that zone. That's it. We got a first time chat from Tel Aviv. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. We got a great comment in the chat. First time chat from Keratin. Asking, um, as a Cubase user, I'd love to see you do a song on Cubase just to see your workflow. Since it's truly the days, I wanted to see you live on that. Well, the good news is I actually just got possession of all my old hard drives. So I have all of those sessions. And uh, I think in the coming months, I might pull up some of those sessions and run through them. So stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, uh, let's get back to this vibe here. Beautiful. That's cool. Okay, let's hit let's hit play for a second. So guys, I have no idea where the one is on that. I have no idea, but I just wanted to point out here that I'm just hitting play, I'm listening, and I'm just feeling out with the new chords of what where things should go and where things should be. 
um, just to give you guys kind of a heads up what was going on with that. Okay, that's crazy. Let's um let's open up uh XO and let's find a drum pattern that works with this crazy sound effect in the background. And let's just flip through some random patches and see what's going to work. Because let's find a nice groove. And we're not looking for like a, a super finished final groove. We're just looking for something rhythmic here. So once again, let's hit play and see how, how it all works. a comment in the chat asking if I know how to half time in XO and I actually don't so if you do know let me know crazy sound for a second okay awesome so now on XO you guys if you I, I know maybe a lot of you guys know this but I just want to for those that maybe haven't seen this plugin just share with you guys down here there's all of these little buttons and what they all contain is different uh, they contain a fresh new palette of sounds with the same MIDI rhythms so what we're hearing right now is the or original uh, sample pack so now let's pull up and run through some alternative sounds and see how this changes. Ooh. Oh shit, that's the one. I love that. I love that. Let's let's just for the sake of it, let's go through two or three more and see, but to me that's the one. Wow. Okay, let's flip to another one. Yo, I just have to jump in. I see a couple comments in the chat. Guys, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. For example, the halftime stuff and doesn't it distort it and do the math. You guys are, I know you guys are trying to help, but I'm just trying to let you guys know. I'm already past that. You know what I mean? I'm already moving on. I'm already focusing on these sound sets. You know? 
And a lot of times when you're in the studio, if you're spending two minutes trying to figure out how to halftime something and you just don't know how to do it, say goodbye to the vibe. Say goodbye. You got to be fast. You got to know what you're doing. And um, for the question specifically on how to reduce the tempo of XO in half, I don't know what it is, but I'm not about to sit here for five minutes and figure that out because that's, that's not interesting to me. It's better just to keep going. Um, just had to, just had to mention it. I love that shaker. I'm gonna stick to that first one. That one just gets me. But let's change out a couple sounds. I think this kick could be maybe a little bit different. So let's go to the kick here and just run through some different alternatives. Oh shit, okay. I thought that was a kick doing the pattern, but it looks like it's the snare. Okay, cool. So let's go to snare and we'll run through some sample, uh, uh, different options. Got a, we got a comment in the chat from first time chatter, Mitchell Parks. Do you always know what you want in your head or is it just the way the track makes you feel? Well, sometimes I have an idea and sometimes I don't. And... And that can change very fast. Sometimes I can hear something and I already know like, oh, that's like, I have an idea. And then other times I'm just, I'm in the dark and I'm just creating and I'm trying to just, um, I'm just feeling out what, what feels best, you know? So it can go a lot of different ways. So that's, that's how I work. I like how that has a little bit of a high frequency. That sample has... I just switched the sample on the snare right now. And I love how it just has that little high frequency information there. I love that. It, it, it dirties it up a bit. It may be, it maybe it could be viewed as bad, but I, I like giving it that grit. Because I would have... I would have probably layered that myself in the future. So it's cool that that sample had just the perfect thing. Okay. So to me, this is awesome vibe. Let's go back to that other instance of hive that we had created here. And, um, man, this sound is phenomenal. Got a comment in the chat asking if I've tried Shaper Box 3 yet, and I haven't, but I, um, it looks amazing. I can't wait to try it out. It looks like they really, really crushed it with this latest update they did. Okay, let's hit play and see what we can do. And let's also turn up that, uh, that crazy sound. Let's turn that up just a little bit. Okay, let's let's try.
There's a lot of really great things with that, but I'm going to keep, keep searching. We got a comment in the chat asking, um, why do I use the mouse on my left hand? Um, I, I actually use the mouse on my right hand. The camera might be reversed from where you're seeing it. Um, and yeah. Okay, I think we should try another VST for this melody that we're trying to figure out here. This is crazy. I wonder how... Oh, presets. Let's go to arpeggiator. love that um let's definitely use that but i just want to answer a comment in the chat um from peru which is also where my partner angel fire is from and was is definitely one of my favorite places i've been to in the world man love peru um and the question is is uh do you think it's indispensable to study audio engineering for a producer and uh, the answer to that is is no. Um, I've I've been realizing that how I've chosen to maneuver in this world and with music and whatnot is very different than a lot of people. So I can only share with you guys my experiences and and what I have experienced and what I and what I feel like I know. Um, anyone can be a producer. You don't need to be an engineer. Uh, you just have to have an idea and have to be able to work with people that can deliver that idea. Um, but you have to be dedicated to it. You have to really take it seriously. Um, because otherwise you'll suck. <laughs> so um, it can be really help when you work with really awesome people. Uh, I came from a city called Calgary that was that didn't have any any infrastructure musically really whatsoever. So, uh, and working with people at the studios was costing a lot of money, and I was working every day after school or after work. I was putting in that time, so I couldn't afford to go to work with anyone else. I I, I almost needed to figure it out on my own. So. For me, I, I started learning, like I was telling you guys earlier on the stream, I was working with different people in my city and I was engineering and I was writing 
and I was uh, making the beats and I was like setting everything up on some engineer shit. And I was doing everything. I was doing artwork. I was just creating. It was so much fun, guys. I, I learned so much off those early years. I put an enormous amount of time into my craft. Um, so I, I would, I recommend like, no matter where you are in the world, like just, if you don't know how to do something, you can Google the question. And if you can Google the question, you can find the answer to what you're looking for, for almost anything and everything. And if you can build that habit of being self-sufficient and finding the answers for what you're looking for, if you can build and develop that habit, um, you're, you're unstoppable. You're really unstoppable. Um, I could have had a million excuses in, in my, um, in my musical career for, I could have had a million excuses, but the mentality I've always taken was that, uh, everything is my fault. <laughs> like I'm responsible for, I mean, not everything, but you guys know what I mean. It's like, I have to take that responsibility, like for everything. I can't blame anyone for anything. I have to take that responsibility. So I think that that framework of thinking is really helpful in anything that we do. It's so easy to say, well, hey, like even for this live stream, it'd be so easy for me to say, well, hey guys, I've been moving the last two weeks and I'm doing construction and renovations and I'm tired and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I could have a million excuses, but I don't care for those excuses. And I don't think anyone else does either. So. We just have to take responsibility and we have to figure things out and troubleshoot. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a producer or if I'm a troubleshooter. And sometimes I wonder if those are actually the same things. I might not be the best at communicating wh exactly what I'm trying to say, but I think you guys get the general idea. Okay. Um, anyways, this sound that we just pulled up was crazy over this. It just added just the perfect amount of melodies. So let's go ahead and um, I think we can hit this button here and Ableton will actually just pull back up exactly what I did. Perfect. So it did. So let's grab, let's grab a, a, a great eight bar loop here. And I'm going to just drag this out. I'm holding control right now so that I can perfectly move it exactly where I want and Somewhere around there is good. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to slide the starting piece just there. And um, let's crop it and let's hit play. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's duplicate the crazy sound and let's delete it for the second time and let's hit play. It's shaping up. It's it's shaping up. Let's grab this crazy melody, which feels like it's kind of doing some random things. Let's just grab that and only have it for the first four bars. And let's go ahead and double this two times. And let's hit play for a second. Okay, that, that's sounding good. It's shaping up a little bit. Let's open up another sound here. I just threw Repro 1 in. Uh, I've never used any of these things before, so this is all new for me. Let's turn this down just a little bit. Let's fly through some presets. 
Let's hear the sounds. Okay, before we start messing with this new melody, let's throw Shaper Box in to the last sound we were just working with. And uh, let's create some sort of a rhythmic pattern here. So I just selected that more sawtooth waveform. And uh, let me just give it a little bit of a curve. Let's hit play and see how this goes. Okay, let's throw time before the volume module and let's do repeat two. Let's run through some of these presets and see how we can shape the sound to be. That sounds really cool. Let's keep moving in that direction. I'm going to put width in. And uh, with width, let's increase this to two bars. And let's have this go from mono. Instead of 200% here, let's just move up to just a little past 100%. And uh, let's hit play and see. Let's let's bring this up to about 150. Beautiful. And now what I would I I'd say what we should do is let's open up this instance of XO and let's just go ahead and and export this. So let's get all the waves together here. One button, it does it all. And um, let's, oh, we need an export folder. No, nah, let's just, hmm. Okay. Let's just set an export folder. We'll just make a random one here. Let's hit all stems. Let's go back here, put it there. Okay, let's now mute XO and use these audio forums and hit play. Let's try moving this melody an octave up.
Okay, let's run with this. Let's also turn down the drums a little bit. Okay, so this is all sounding cool, but I, I think we are we still need to figure out what's the real focus of this, of this idea, uh, because it's a lot going on and there's melodically not something that is really sticking the way that I think it should. So let's go through some sounds and see what might, th what, what that could be. Crazy. Okay, something like that sounds really cool. Um, I'm playing it a little bit off what the time is set to, so let's just see. I might have to arrange some things.
Okay, let's hit play with everything and see. The timing's gonna be a mess, but we're gonna figure that out. Let's hit play and see. So I gotta freeze the the first sound, um, and then I'm gonna move the starting point. I believe it's here. Let's hit play. And the starting point for this should be, I believe, here. So now I'm just fine tuning a couple of the notes. Since this is a little bit more of an experimental or, or whatever you guys want to call it, a more of a vibe, um, things are just a little bit more complicated than they would maybe normally be. But that's okay. That's just what the, that's how I'm feeling right now. Okay, so I just opened up an instance of Sampler, and I'm going to put it, um, I'm going to start it like somewhere here maybe. And let's hit play. Okay, so that, that lead line, let's throw crystallizer on it. And um, let's see if we can make it sound a little bit more unique.
That's insane. That's seriously insane. I'm gonna group all the melodies in a in a folder. And I'm gonna do the same for the drums currently. Um Let's mute the drums for a moment and see what the melody is doing. Okay, let's freeze the the one of the melodies here and let's just loop maybe one bar of it and see how that goes. Okay, that's that's awesome. Uh for the drums now, let's 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 kind of give it a little bit of character. Um I wanted to throw like a crazy distortion on it. Let's try this Arturia preamp. I don't even know if I've used this before. Oh, crazy. Let's let's mess with this for a second and see see what what it sounds like. So let's let's pitch down that kick, uh, that that snare kick or whatever. Okay, on this melody channel, let's throw Pro G on it. Let's now bring this over to um, the, the the snare channel here. Um, post effects is great. We'll go ducking. Set it to external for the side chain. Push that over. Shorten the release. Let's hit play and see.
That's phenomenal. Um, okay, so let's now throw this in arrangement view really quick. I'm just going to hit record. Okay, so this is sounding absolutely crazy. I'm really loving this. I still think that we are shy of, um, obviously, you know, there could be a vocal, there could be a lot of really amazing things put on top of this. So I'm gonna, I've just opened up contact right now. And, um, there's so many great new libraries I have here. I haven't even got a chance to even go through all of them. But it would be awesome to find some crazy vocal thing. I'm going to switch the view to contact to this one. And I think I'm going to see... Let's try this. Okay, there's something about this sound that is auto-tuning it to a different key than we need. Um, I'm going to guess it's pro... Oh, it says major here. Let's switch that to minor. And I believe the key of this track is an F. So let's see. Crazy. Let's hit play on this.
that was cool. Um, I captured it. Let's open up this loop and uh, see. See what we have. See if we can make this work. I believe it was somewhere around here. gonna remove I'm gonna mute the last few notes and um, man that's great also I noticed I, I didn't have a perfect eight bar loop here that's cool it was a little bit off let's get that on eight bars and let's hit play and um, let's also duplicate this new vocal track thing let's delete the MIDI data and let's open up uh, a new sound that can maybe play something in between all of this. So let's see, let's pull up another few patches here. I remember we used one of these sounds a few streams ago. I think it was that one. Man, such a great sample. Uh, okay, let me close. I got two open now. I think we got to close this one too, and then let's just reopen that same patch. Okay, cool. Now let's... Uh, Oh, I think, I think contact glitched. So I'm going to just open up a fresh new instance and just do the same thing one more time. And what I want to do is I want to raise this by an octave because I want that. I want the, the chipmunk sound. Let's hit play and, and see if we can decorate something in between.
Well, I know for sure we want that at the end. So let's open this up. We know for sure we want that this here at the end. Um, let's hit play now. Let's duplicate this track. Let's save that last piece for there. And let's bring the pitch down back to zero. And let's see if we can fill in. So I hope um, even just kind of walking this through talking about it, to me, it's almost like painting because now we have all these different sections and parks that we can now paint in between. So I know for sure that I want this information here on the screen. I want this information here to play at that loop, but we have all of this space now in between here. Now that doesn't mean we have to fill up all the spaces, but now I'm going to try to color in between these, th this part of the drawing, if you want to use that analogy, you know? Uh, so let's hit play and see what we can do. Beautiful. That's exactly it. We're going to keep it consistent. We're not going to vary it every single time. We can just throw that in, ex lock that in just like that. And we can drag this out. Uh, and let's just duplicate this and create it so the fourth one doesn't play. Now, let's grab these two vocal things, add it to its own group. And um, let's, let's throw Shaper Box on it because I kind of want to do a stuttering thing with it now. Let's hit play. Okay, let's only throw Shaper Box on the on the first vocal thing. Let's keep the last one just as it is and let's 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 keep tweaking it away. Okay, for this drive within Shaper Box now, let's extend this to four bars and um, let's do something where it, it, it rises a little bit. So again, I'm going to go to this sine wave preset or a square, whatever, you know what I mean, the sawtooth. And um, let's just give it a little bit of a curve and let's see how this sounds. So I'm going to delete all of um, this extra stuff that was added accidentally. And I just really want that time to stutter twice. Let's close it. And uh, let's go to the main pulsing points. Yeah, I'm looking at the chat now, guys. And uh, yeah, the glare is really in my eyes. <laughs> um, I might have to move for the next live stream and figure out a better place. But it's all good. I'm getting by. Let's see if there's any other comments in the chat that I can touch on now. First time chatter, chart snail, what up? Thanks for the nice message. <laughs> we got a hilarious comment saying Carlos blinded by the lights. Yeah, I'm like literally blinded right now. 
Um, got a comment here asking what Mac, uh, what Mac I'm using and how much RAM. So I'm using a fully loaded uh, MacBook Pro. Um, fully loaded. I got the highest specs I could, and um, it's been game changing for me. Uh, we got a comment from um, Startup Engineer. How do you think about balancing between learning new skills versus applying them to making stuff? You know, it's, it's the same thing as uh, cooking, right? You can learn. You can do a, a trillion different recipes. You could do a new recipe every day. But if you're not, if you're not tasting it and if you're not sitting with family and friends and sharing what you're, what you're creating, what you're, you know, what you're chefing up, then you're going to be out of balance. You're going to have no idea how much salt should be in it, how much pepper, how much spices you have, you have no idea. So you have to, you have to taste when you're cooking. You have to, if you're learning new stuff and you're learning new skills, you have to apply it. They're not separate. They're the same thing. And they're very important. You have to be, it's very important to be in balance with those things. Uh, it would be like just watching tutorial videos all day, tutorial videos all day, and then you don't apply any of that to your work. It's pointless. It's like watching a workout video and your feed is full of super ripped healthy people that are really strengthening their bodies and you're watching these videos all day but if you can't if you don't even get up and do a push-up what's the point you could learn eight different ways of doing a push-up but if you're not doing it watching the videos is not going to do anything for you so you have to apply when you're learning guys um we got another comment here. Man, we got so many great comments, and I really appreciate you guys all ch chiming in. Uh, somebody's asking if I could break down some records that I did. Um, so I did that a few times with Mix with the Masters, and we've been trying to figure out how to do more. Um, th their teams and my teams, we've been trying to figure out how to do more. And um, it's just been very difficult. I can't travel with all of these restrictions. So I've been, um, I've been staying put here uh, in Miami, which is an incredible place to be. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that I want to do more breakdown videos, but we're, I want to do that with them, to be honest, because they, they do it really well, and they have a great infrastructure set up for people to learn from. And uh, I really want to support and continue supporting what they're doing. Uh, floating spaces. How's it going? Nice to see you. I love you always chime in on the chats. It's nice to see you. Thanks for doing the live during the move. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for the message. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do a lot more streams. I mean, I might do in this next week or two, I might do a lot more than just one stream a week. So stay tuned for that. We've got another great comment asking, how do I manage CPU usage, especially when it's a big session? I saw that in the mix with the master episodes, you had a lot of things going on. So a lot of the records that you've heard on the mix with the master episodes, they're songs that have been worked on for months and months and months, uh, upwards of a year. So you're, and I, I try to keep everything live in it because it helps as we're crafting and creating stuff. It just helps to have that flexibility. And then, of course, a lot of times I have to actually freeze things. So there's a lot of layers to the songs that you guys are hearing by the time they actually come out. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to get everything sounding just the way it does. Uh, so how do I manage it? Well, I don't do anything other than use my DAW. And I try to keep all other plugins to a minimum. Having this new laptop is insane. So that's been the biggest hack ever. Um, let me switch the camera here for a second, y'all. I've been on this one camera the whole stream. Let me talk some shit to you guys directly with the sun in my eyes. 
Okay. Um, Indie Rock here says, My mom hates my music, though. Yeah, so what? You guys, it doesn't, you know, people are going to like and dislike what you do. If you want, you can follow that. But it's not a good path to follow because people's opinions are swayed so easily. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of psychology hacking almost music and putting out putting out a product doesn't matter what kind of product. But I've, I have more experience with putting out music products. So I'll speak on that. It's, it's a lot of psychology. You know, if things are brighter, if you have one song that's brighter than the next, the brighter song is going to be perceived to be better. There's all these little things, volume. That's why everyone's pushing for things to be loud. So just because your mom doesn't like your music, maybe she probably feels like you should be doing something else. That You know, a lot of moms feel that way. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy dice roll, the music industry. And you got to basically treat it like there is no B plan. Although you definitely should have a B plan and a C plan. Um... You know, and a lot of times that energy can actually help fuel you to to push to be even better. You know, sometimes you can really transform negativity into uh, something that inspires you to work hard and push to be awesome. I used a lot of that energy coming up. A lot of times people doubted me for a million different reasons. And you know what? They, they weren't really wrong. I, I wasn't at... You know, I was still learning and building my craft. So I think the biggest thing to do is, is not to take anyone's opinion too personally. And instead, just try to use that as momentum or energy to fuel your, your, what you want to create further. First time chatter, Al M Masser saying, your cookups are so inspirational. Well, thank you for the message. I love chatting with y'all, and I love when you guys write me. It's cool. Uh, we, we got M. Grand laughing at my analogies. Yeah, there's a lot of analogies. I think sometimes analogies can be helpful because sometimes we think music is just music, and sometimes we think this is just that or whatever. But really, everything is the same thing, guys, you know? It's all the same thing. Uh... We got a comment asking, what's the next song for Mix with the Masters? And I'm not sure yet. I think when that time and opportunity comes, I'll probably put energy into figuring out what that will be. Maybe some new Grimes records. We've been having a blast with this, with making all these new songs. That might be a lot of fun to pull them up. But we'll see. Uh, we got a comment saying, I should try experimenting with break core. Yeah, I should look up what break core is and check it out. That sounds good. Thank you. Chart Snail saying, love you, man. Been watching for nearly two years. Would you ever make a Porter Robinson type beat? Um, well, thanks so much for, for uh, tuning in. I'm not super familiar with Porter Robinson. I'm, I, I, know, I, know of, uh, I know of their work, but I'm just not super familiar. But uh, no, it doesn't really inspire me to make any kind of beat. It all, I've been finding the only thing that really inspires me is just to create in the abyss. And a lot of times it's fun doing that with a vocalist because the vocalist will kind of ground it. And then it's fun for me just to create new sounds, new textures, new tempos. That's what I love to do. And thankfully it's worked out well for me over the years. Somebody is saying, these streams are my meditations. Amazing. I'm happy to hear. Uh, when will you release new tracks? That's another comment from Matt Velli. And um, yeah, there's a lot of tracks. I think the main thing is having things be purposeful. And I believe it's like telling a story. And I want to make sure that when I'm telling the story of Joy Odyssey, that it's in a way that is um, in a way that feels right. So I, I don't want to just release a thousand songs. I, I want to definitely release quality stuff to the world. So Hopefully, sooner than later, we'll get some new tracks out. Uh, we got a comment from Mitchell Parks asking, does it help if I organize within the track and label everything, especially as more effects are added? Yeah, so if I'm, uh, 
if I'm cooking up, like I, I rarely ever make stuff alone. I'm always working with a singer or I'm always working with someone. And, uh, but when I'm working alone, I'll just do things. I'm not going to label it. It's all good. But if I'm working in a session with somebody, with a vocalist or whoever, I'm very meticulous. I make sure I label everything because it's in incredibly important. Uh, especially if you're, de if you're just dealing with a couple songs, who cares? E you know, whatever. But I'm dealing with a lot of different records. I'm dealing with a lot of different artists. I'm dealing with a lot of work. So it's, I, um, through necessity, I've had to be very organized in, in how I work. So it's incredibly important. I'm not demonstrating that proficiency with organization on these live streams. Again, because we're just cooking up. I feel like we're cooking up one-on-one. -on -one, so I don't really care to label stuff too much. Uh, I've got a comment. How was your three-point set? The videos looked amazing. Yeah, it, three, three points was literally the best show festival ever. Rosalia was unbelievable over mono crushed it um so many great artists so many great uh, the audiences were incredible uh the whole festival was probably my favorite festival i've been to to date it was so well put together and i think more than anything i think just like the audience like all the people everyone was everyone's vibe was just amazing that's the thing i love about miami is that miami people here they they know how to have fun man and they really love music and for me you know spending my life creating music it's just a really welcoming place to be i love miami uh we got a comment here saying bro i really enjoy every stream you're the best uh by the way do you work on any albums for big artists yeah sometimes i do and, uh, you know, when you say big artists, I'm assuming you mean like super popular, like major label artists. Sometimes I do. Just depends. At different points in my career I have, and at different points I've chosen not to. So, however, you know, yeah, you should check out my discography. Just search, uh, search up Elangelo and take a look at some of the albums I've done. I've executive produced. I've, uh engineered i've written i've mixed i've produced uh a lot of albums primarily with the weekend with abel uh but that's that's what i do I, I love doing albums it's it's what i've always done and what i'll probably continue to do Um, we got a comment from this is J88. Have you been messing around with odd sound MTS ESP at all? I remember you being excited about that in discord. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't yet. There's a, I have a whole list of plugins that I need to download and check out. Uh, but I haven't had time just yet. Uh, somebody's asking if the stream will be on YouTube and it definitely will. Everything will be posted on YouTube. So check that out for the Joy Odyssey link. Uh, first time chatter asking me, what's your favorite genre to make? I don't know. I don't really think in terms of genres, honestly. I'm not saying that to be whatever, cool or whatever, maybe. I just literally don't follow genres, guys. I just make stuff. Uh, I, lo I love doing everything. Um, oh, man, there's so many comments, guys. I'm so many great comments. I don't know if I can answer all these. Just, um, let's get back to this. Let's get back to the song here for a second. But I do appreciate all the messages, y'all. Okay. Let's hear. Let's hear what we got.
I'm gonna throw a reverb. Okay, let's take off that kick for a second. I'm gonna just mute it here. Okay, two things. That, that sample at the end, that vocal sample at the end, I wanna shave off some of that low end. I'm gonna throw a volcano on. And uh, probably bring it up somewhere around here. Give it a little bit of a peek. Uh, and then the secondly, the main vocal stabs. I'm also going to throw Volcano on. And um, do something a little bit similar. Not as much low end taken off as the other vocal sample, but somewhat. And then I'm also going to high pass it a little bit too. So let's hit play and see how this sounds. <laughs> We got a good call. We got a good question here from Startup Engineer asking um, Volcano versus Pro Q. They're both great and they both do different things. I like Volcano a lot. I've always loved Volcano, primarily because of the modulation features at the bottom. You can do a lot. These are super powerful. Um, and then just generally, it's just a lot of fun just to throw high pass and low pass filters on. And I just love everything about this plugin. I've, I've used it forever. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorite plugins to filter. But this isn't the only one. There's a lot of great options. It's just, if I had to pull one really quick, I'm always going to Volcano. Okay, let's go to the sound here. Now I loop this, but let's extend it to a two bar loop instead. Okay, so I'm going to group the, I'm going to throw the kick drum, which is actually the snare, but I'm going to call it kick one, into a group. We're going to call this kick. And we're going to have the melody sidechain against that group instead of kick one. And then let's open up a new audio channel, or uh, sorry, a new MIDI channel. Let's, let's throw Atlas on it and uh let's just search for some kicks and let's use decaps library and um let's cycle through some new kicks
What's up, Germany? There's a great comment in the chat asking um, why I use hollow as a filter type on Volcano. To be honest, I used it a long time ago because I liked it once and I just kind of always stuck to using it. Uh, all the other filter types are great too. I just have mine defaults at the hollow, so it's really not a super deep uh, thing. Any of them are great. Let's try hard on this one. That's crazy. 
So watch, this is why Volcano is, in a lot of ways, I wouldn't say it's superior to Q3, it's just, it's, this is why I use Volcano, because you can creatively do great things. So I'm going to set this to, I believe, 8 bars. I'm going to throw this up all the way. I could have done this in Shaper Box, but in Volcano, you can do it too. And this is how I do it. So now when we hit play, visually, you're going to see what the filter is doing by the end of the eight bar progression. And um, also let's add another, well, let's add the same one, sorry, for the peak. And let's hit play. Okay, so that's too slow. Let's try four bars. This is sounding amazing. Uh, let's duplicate this. And I'm going to take out the vocal stuff for the second half. And let's just see how that how that feels. This is crazy. I would love to play this out. This would just this would just go so crazy. Okay, we got we got a few comments I want to touch on here cuz I think they're important. Um Well, there's a few comments. I think I'm going to simplify a couple comments into one. So for arrangement um, to be honest, guys, I, I, again, I, I said this earlier, but I don't, I don't really cook up, uh, like I don't really cook up on my own. I, I never do that. Um, I should, but I don't. Um, and when I'm working with a lot of times when I'm not a lot of times, like every time I'm ever working with an artist, it's always, we're doing it together. We're doing it in the moment and we're creating something so crazy. 
you know, because that real world feedback is so uh, important. Um, so it doesn't matter which writer or artist or, or, or any, anyone, anyone I'm working with, you'll always get something that is really unique to that interaction. Uh, and that's, and those moments are really cool and really fun. So a lot of times I won't even be doing the majority of what I'm, sh I'm doing on the stream right now, or if I'm doing it, I'm doing it so fast, but a lot of times within the first three to five minutes, usually there's a great, uh, melody or there's a, usually a great rhythm. It's very fast. And then usually from there, I'm, I don't touch, I don't do anything from there because then all of a sudden we're laying down vocal ideas and the vocal takes up a huge part of everything. So really it's the, the first couple layers are just to establish the tempo, the melody, to, it's, it's to establish, you know, I'm doing some great sound design stuff that is sounds unique and interesting that I would love to hear out in the world. And, and, uh, you know, usually the vocalist is, is kind of putting together different melody ideas or lyrical ideas. Uh, and again, usually within the first 15 minutes, let's say, you know, the mic is already set up good to go when we're laying down some incredible vocals. And then from there, really what I'm doing is I'm chopping up and I'm processing vocals and I'm messing around with different arrangements and I'm seeing what fits and what doesn't. That's, that's really when I'm working with anyone, that's really what I'm doing. And that's a huge skill set that, um, I would love to share and show you guys. And I think in the future, we're going to create some opportunities to do that in a really fun way, but everything we've been doing so far with the live streams has just been just cooking up, making beats and, um, it's been a lot of fun, but we, I'm getting a couple questions regarding arrangement. And so usually when you're working with a vocalist, it's, it's way easier to determine what the arrangement is. Um, because then you're really working on a song opposed to just working on a beat. Um, so that's how I do it. Uh, we got a uh, first time chat from... I can't say your name, y'all. Sorry, man. Jano Cartos. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Uh, which, at which delay do I prefer Valhalla or Echo Boy? Um, I've been using Valhalla for the last few years, but Echo Boy is amazing too. They're both really good guys. Uh, somebody says, isn't there too much feedback, uh, within that delay I added? And the answer to that is obviously no, there's never enough feedback. In fact, uh, I love delays and reverbs and I've been using it in everything forever. And, uh, I like it, you know, that's why I gave it a, a space on the second half here. And I let the vocals ride out for the first half. Cause I wanted that delay to carry through on the second half, uh, just to break down the thought process. Um, I'm getting asked if I, uh, from Max Owen, did, did I finish any of the stream tracks that I made on the live stream? I haven't yet, but that's a plan I want to do. I want to go through all the live stream ideas and I want to arrange it out and put it together as some sort of a live stream comp compilation. So that is going to happen. Somebody's asking if I could stream with an artist so we could see how your workflow is. So I would love to do that, but a lot of times um, exposing or showing the work process isn't for everyone guys. And that's, um, that's the thing I've, I've been noticing is that not everyone is as comfortable with sharing their creative process. Uh, I know for a very long time, I wasn't okay with sharing my creative process. I was, um, I just was more private. Now I'm at a different point in my life. So depending on the artists I work with, would depends, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. The majority of artists aren't okay with, with, um, live streaming. So it will have to be a scenario that I create with someone where we intently go into it, knowing that it will be live streamed. And, and if it's framed like that, there was, there's, there's an infinite amount of opportunities to get in with a vocalist and get in with an artist and create something, uh, live which will be a lot of fun. Uh, 
just scrolling through some of the messages here. Uh, what MacBook Pro do I use? Uh, I use the fully loaded, the, the newest one. It's fully loaded. Uh, somebody's asking, how can you get rid of the muddiness when using too much feedback? Uh, just roll off some of the low end. That'll help. S on this, you can even do things with st on the stereo side that kind of helps it get out of the way from whatever your main focus is. Bro, I'm getting asked about Broken Wings. It's a song I shared on an earlier stream. I can't wait for that song to come out. Um, it's now going to be a collaboration with an artist I dearly respect. So look out for that one, guys. I'm really excited for it. Um, okay, y'all. Uh, let's, let's hear this beat, and I think I'm going to wrap up the stream. I got to get going with the rest of my day here. It's not easy renovating a house and moving what feels like 50 times. It's just so exhausting, guys. If I recommend anything to y'all, you know, don't move as much as I've moved around. It's, it's too exhausting. It's too exhausting. Uh, let's listen to this and let's, let's, and let's go from there. Oh, I got a comment I have to answer. Somebody says, do you regret showing your workflow? Absolutely not. Zero percent. I love, I've always wanted to find a way to reach out and, uh, do things with 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 the world i just haven't found the medium to do that with but doing this on twitch this is this is this is the most fun i i love doing this with y'all guys i love creating making sounds talking with you guys um you guys have to understand like i i've been doing this my whole life alone so to do this with cameras and and to be able to share and talk with you guys this is this is a lot of fun for me there's, um, I don't really regret much of anything in my life. So I don't know that word regret doesn't even register in my thought process, in my reality, because regrets, regret is thinking of the past. And, uh, and sure you can talk shit with your friends and say, oh man, I regret doing that or whatever, or this or that. But the reality of it is, is here we are today. So let's do better. If, if, if someone were to regret something, you know? So, um, anyways, that's my, that's how I think about that. Man, I love you. You guys have the best, most positive comments and I really appreciate it. Okay. Let's, 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 let's play this and see how it sounds. This is so hard, man. I mean, I would start if we're if we're gonna arrange this out really quickly. I would do something like this. I would take out the kick. I just keep it simple for the first eight bars, and then drop into that crazy kick after.
That's amazing. Um, guys, I'm going to wrap up. It's been a really great stream. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And um, I'm going to do a few more. I'm going to kind of figure out this live stream setup a little bit in this new uh, Airbnb. And um, thanks so much for tuning in, though. We got a comment saying, Carl, let's do a reggaeton on your next stream. 100%. Let's do something. Let's do something like that for the next one. For today's stream, I just felt like being a little bit more experimental. Um, love you all so much. And um, I hope you guys really enjoyed the stream. I had a blast. I think this idea is like crazy. And I would want to play this out on my set. I'm really loving the fast tempos these days. This is 139. And, um, but yeah, maybe the next stream we could do something that's a little bit more Latin. Um, you know, that could be really fun too. Uh, all right, y'all. Well, without further ado, peace and have a beautiful rest of your day and, uh, watch out for the next stream. I'm going to do it sooner than later. All right, y'all take care. Peace.